Atomic Jones. White flag raised, they're away to a very level break in the Derby Trial Stakes Group 3. Seven runners over 10 furlongs, first to show in front of Stone Age. Close up on the inside is Fringe Claim with Glory Days. They're tracked by Great Max, two and a half lengths to Duke de Sesa and Atomic Jones. And a four, five length gap to Manu at Corday. Racing the end of the second furlong in front of Stone Age and Ryan Moore. Bowling along just over the length in front of Fringe Claim and Billy Lee disputing third place. Glory Days, Ronan Whelan on the outside of Great Max and Lee Roach. Then Duke de Sace and Chris Hayes. Upsides Atomic Jones and Colin Keane. Four lengths to Manowit Corday and Kevin Manning, last of the seven. Right across from the stand, six and a half furlongs to go. Little changes in the lead of Stone Age, followed by Fringe Claim. Glory Days on the outside of Great Max and then... Duke de Sesa and Atomic Jones, and beaten in two at two, has won behind Manowit Corday. Racing to the five, the halfway stage in the Leopardstown Derby trial stakes in front of Stone Age, has extended his advantage to two lengths over Fringe Claim. Little between Glory Days and Great Max for the third, and then Atomic Jones, Duke de Sesa, and Manowit Corday. Still in the same order with less than four furlongs to go. Stone Age maintains a couple of lengths advantage over Fringe Claim to Hoop Colors. Nudged along on the outside is Glory Days, then Great Max and Atomic Jones. Duke de Sesa and Manowit Cordes come under pressure at the back. Two and a half furlongs from home is the end of the straight. Stone Age the leader from Fringe Claim. In third is Great Max, then Glory Days, Atomic Jones, Duke de Sesa. And the back marker is Manowit Cordes, a furlong and a half from home. And kicking on in the lead is Stone Age. Opens up a sizable lead. In second place, Fringe Claim, then Glory Days. Great Max is next, but out in front is Stone Age racing inside the final furlong. It's Stone Age dismantling this field as they run up to the finish. Stone Age wins the 15th edition of the Leperstown Derby trial for Aidan O'Brien, written by Ryan Moore. Second, glory days on the inside of Fringe Claim and then Atomic Jones. So Aidan sadly Luxembourg out, but obviously after what we've seen here today, it's very much a case of Stone Age in. How much did he impress you today? Has he rocketed to the top of the pecking order as far as you're concerned? Yeah, we, we always thought the world of him, obviously. Uh, he all, I think nearly most of his runs were in group or group ones last year. Um, obviously, he he um, did very well over the winter. Uh, he started in Navin and we were delighted with him. And the plan was always to come, go to Navin, come here and then go to the Derby. Um, um, we, we have been training him slowly like that. Um, Alan and Seamus and uh, Davy and Andrew and... Derek and everyone isn't to do with him at home. I've always been delighted with him all the way along. Um, uh, we felt that he would come here and come forward a bit more for the next day. Um, he's a big high cruiser, Gary. He hits the gates very well. Uh, he's tactically quick. Um, he relaxes and, and he gallops through the line. He, he'd be very happy to be getting something to lead him, but he has a very high, he goes at a high tempo, um, which is unusual, I suppose, with, with a horse like it. Um, Obviously, we saw a mile and a quarter, no problem with him, but he's always galloping through the line, and we always thought maybe that he, he would get further, so it will be interesting. There's a little bit of water to go under the bridge, obviously, between now and then, but at this stage, would you be surprised if he didn't end up being the one Ryan Road, just as, I suppose, Bolshoi Ballet was last year? Yeah, I suppose. Like I, I don't know. Obviously, Ryan will talk to the lads and uh, see what, what uh, they want to do. Um, hopefully, he'll be OK after it. And ground was beautiful here, and... and beautiful track so hopefully that will be all um, perfect with him but he, he, he will talk to the lads and see what, what they want to do with all the horses in the trials and uh, make a decision then but I, I know by Ryan he, he was very happy with him today and as he was with the horses obviously in Chester and the horse yesterday so um, and they have been coming forward from their first to their second runs and and uh, so it will be interesting but uh, he, he was very um he was very taken by him today, I think, Gary, yes. It's been a sensational run on the trial front, Aidan. Any reason why any of those trials runners, winners won't go to Epsom? Are you going to be having the usual strong hand? Oh, yeah, hopefully, Gary, we will. And like, Obviously, it will be the lads' decision what they'll want to do. Um, but they, like, that's what those horses are kind of bred and reared to be, uh, horses for those classics. And when they run in their trials, they, they were all on individual work programmes, so that meant that they weren't working together. Uh, because all the races were at different days. So I, I'd, I'd imagine what they will do is have a sit down, have a good chat, and, like I say, discuss it with Ryan and 
then see what what they, they think. But they they all look like horses that are going to get a mile and a quarter plus. Um, every one of them were kind of going to the lines in their trial, so that's a good sign, you know. So hopefully, uh, Gary. Obviously, there's a bit of time between now and then, and uh, hopefully, hopefully they they will be there when the time comes.